Hi, Mike Mazzalongo here with BibleTalk.tv. Uh, we're doing a series entitled 10 Steps to the New Spiritual You, and this session here is session number two entitled Drawing Closer. So we're in the process of learning 10 spiritual steps that will help us become more godly or pious, or as the title suggests, spiritually mature. Now, someone might ask, if we are already saved, why make the effort to attain spiritual maturity? Why not relax and enjoy the ride? You know, this type of question reminds me of the student who, after having been given a homework assignment, wants to know what's the minimum number of pages required for the work to be accepted. Like many other things in life, what you get out of Christianity is largely determined by what you put into your faith. So acquiring spiritual maturity is important for at least two reasons. First, in spiritual matters, if we do not consciously move forward, then we unconsciously move backward. In Romans chapter 6, verse 12 and 13, Paul says, Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its lusts, and do not go on presenting the members of your body to sin as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So pursuing spiritual maturity is the second stage in the four-stage transformation that God has planned for those who believe in Jesus Christ. And here are the four stages. Stage number one, regeneration and salvation. Through faith in Jesus expressed in repentance and baptism, we go from lost and condemned sinners to saved saints, forgiven and made alive through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2.38, it says, Peter said to them, Repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Stage number two, sanctification. The process of developing spiritual maturity or godliness with the help of God's Word, the Bible, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and God's people, the Church. This series is an instrument to facilitate that process. Colossians 1 verse 9, 10, Paul also says, For this reason we also, since the day we heard about it, have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Stage number three, glorification, the putting on of our glorified heavenly body, when Jesus raises us from the dead at the end of the world. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44, talks about this process. Paul says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown a perishable body. It is raised an imperishable body. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a natural body, there is also a spiritual body. And then there's stage four, and that is exaltation. The reason for the glorified bodies is to enable us to exist with God as part of the Godhead at the right hand of God. Paul talks about this in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 11 and 12. He says, It is a trustworthy statement, for if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. And so spiritual maturity is important, therefore, because it protects us from sliding back to our worldly ways, and it prepares us for entry into the spiritual realm of heaven when Jesus returns. Now, we've spoken about the first step to spiritual maturity, which is discipline. Developing this virtue is important because without control of self or authority over our own spirit, we will not be able to cultivate and master the other nine steps of this journey. And so the second step to spiritual maturity is intimacy, more specifically, intimacy with God. 
Intimacy means belonging to someone else or close contact, familiarity, association. Intimacy is both a state and a feeling. Intimacy feels warm, satisfying, accepting, personal, deep, private, exclusive, safe, comfortable. In Genesis 2.25, for example, it says of Adam and Eve that the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. They were not simply physically naked and not ashamed, but were also emotionally and spiritually naked. Today, we would say transparent and were not afraid or ashamed. Now, this transparency meant that they knew each other intimately with nothing hidden, nothing camouflaged as something else. This is the type of relationship we strive for in marriage and the type of relationship we must cultivate with God in order to arrive at spiritual maturity. Now, if this be so, how then do we discipline ourselves for intimacy with God? Well, two things to start growing in this area. First, conform to His way and will for our lives. In other words, do not let the physical world rule your time, priorities, and desires, or your life. Godliness or maturity does not happen by accident. You have to work at it. Cultivating intimacy with God requires us to actually pay attention to God. Real attention is what he wants. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. God doesn't want religiosity, you know, fake external spirituality. He wants real prayer, real serving, real worshiping, real giving. The second way to intimacy with God is to allow God to deal with you on his terms, not your terms. You see, our terms with God always serve our purposes. For example, Dear God, please make me healthy, make me more wealthy, make me happier, take care of my family, take care of my things. In his book, Swindoll says, God often does his best work in us when he catches us by surprise and introduces a change that is completely against our own desire. For example, in Acts chapter 16, verse 6, Paul the apostle wanted to go preach in the east where the territory was vast and without the gospel. God, however, frustrated his plan and sent him west, to Rome, where he was eventually martyred, something that was not in Paul's plan. However, he established the church in the Roman Empire, and it flourished. We know that despite this change uh, that led to his suffering and opposition, imprisonment, and death, Paul grew closer, intimate with God. And he died praising and glorifying God for his blessings. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, 6, and 8, we read about this. In the end, Paul was close and very much like God. The end result? Intimacy. When, therefore, you allow God to deal with you on his terms and you accept it, several things naturally stem from this. First, it moves you to seek him more intensely. Secondly, it makes you more dependent on him. Thirdly, it produces a godly character in you. And so, the closer you draw to God, the more he deals with you. The more he deals with you, the closer you draw to him. This is how the dynamic of spiritual intimacy works. Godliness or spiritual maturity becomes the result of being molded by God because you are intimate with him. And so in our effort to be like God, we need to go deep with him, not just enjoy the view from the mountaintop. We want substance in our relationship with him, not just a speedy worship service. We want to feel love and closeness with God, not just talk about religion. And the way to all of these is to cultivate the second step in our journey to spiritual maturity, and that is intimacy with God. Well, that's it for this session. We're going to give you some discussion questions that you can go ahead and talk about in your small groups, and we'll see you uh, for the next session uh, in the future. Bye for now. Question number one. Would you describe yourself as an open person or a closed person? Explain why you think that might be. Question number two. 
On a scale of one, very far, to ten, very close, how near to God do you feel? What reason has kept you where you're at with God? Question number three. Share a time or experience when you felt the closest or the furthest from God. Question number four. What is your strongest spiritual discipline? Prayer, praise, giving, service? What is your weakest? Question number five. How is God dealing with you today? What do you think he wants from you?